Welcome everyone to the One Sages View podcast. I'm Sarah Christensen, your host. Today we are in the last week of April. We're recording this podcast with our guest, Ryan Evans. I'll introduce him in just a moment. We're going to be talking about Pluto and Aquarius, but across the generations and kind of how the Pluto in Aquarius is, you know, kind of the transformation from Aquarius and how that may influence across the various Pluto generations that are living today. So my guest is also an evolutionary astrologer, so we'll go into that. So I'm grateful to be sharing astrology with you and to share what brings what it brings to our life and our human experience for our own growth. So let me introduce Ryan Evans. He's an astrologer, certified master level astrologer and a student of 30 years and practicing professional for 15. He has studied and trained with Stephen Forrest, Pat Kaluza, hope I said that right, and Patricia Walsh and others. Also, he practices an integrative approach to astrology, combining imagery, past life analysis, and healthy encouragement of choice and free will. He's also an organic flower farmer of 30 years, and he aligns his engagement and practice of astrology with the experienced teachings of the natural world and her rhythms. So welcome, Ryan. I'm so glad to have you. Thanks so much, Sarah. I'm so glad to be here. What an honor. Yeah, we're gonna gonna be diving into Pluto, Pluto across the generations. I love this subject uh, because Pluto is such a key planet that we explore through evolutionary astrology. So this is always very interesting, Pluto and the nodes and and that relationship uh, for our transformation and our evolutionary path, right? Like why souls incarnate at a particular time. So let me cover just quickly for everyone. So uh, take out your pencil if you want. This will be in the show notes. And so you can always grab it there too on the YouTube channel. So Pluto and Cancer, we still have people living today with Pluto and Cancer. And that was between 1914 to 1938. And then we had Pluto in Leo, 1938 to 1957. Pluto in Virgo, 1957 to 1971. I'm in the Pluto Virgo generation. Pluto in Libra, 1971 to 1984. Pluto in Scorpio, 1984 to 1995. Pluto in Sagittarius, 1995 to 2008. And Pluto in Capricorn, 2008 to 2023 to 2024. We still have some in 2024. And Pluto in Aquarius, 2023 to 2043. So we have 20 years of Pluto and Aquarius. And so there are a lot of interesting themes because we look at from an evolutionary astrology perspective, both Saturn as a ruler of Aquarius and Uranus. So we kind of like, those are part of the mix. So definitely a a period of some trans significant transformation from an evolutionary standpoint, but also what I kind of look at from, and yours may be similar, Ryan, in just the evolutionary perspective of like Uranus, the liberator, the the rebel, you know, kind of what's breaking open during this period of time. Now, Uranus is not in Aquarius, it's just a co-ruler. So there's kind of that relationship. We want to kind of keep that in mind. Definitely at a square uh, by sign right now. So where do you want to begin in kind of exploring this subject in terms of Pluto in Aquarius and you know, picking a, picking a generation that we should start with. <laughs> sure. I think one of the most important things, well, actually, let me back up. Thanks for that great intro, Sarah. So glad, <laughs> so glad to be here. Nice to see you. Sarah and I go way back, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between and outside that. We were both <laughs> students with the uh, Stephen Forrest apprenticeship program 184 years ago. And, uh, you know, so, so we uh, had a little bit of camaraderie prior to our recording and so that was mm-hmm. fun so hey sarah yeah. high five Hi. nice high to five. see you Pretty but i think one of the most important things to first lay out is why pluto what's pluto all about why do we even have this archetype in our consciousness or outside of our consciousness in the first place and when we think about pluto and where it is astronomically It's Mm -hmm. there, this little tiny ball of ice and rock 
outside, way on the outer edges of the solar system beyond Neptune. And if we consider first Neptune, Neptune, we stand at the end of the solar system and open up to the great mysteries of the universe. We allow inspiration to come in, higher forms of creativity, compassion, universal, omnipresent, supergalactic oneness. But if we're going to experience this quote unquote Christ consciousness, we have to get through this hazy band of archetypes where we've stuck all of our crap, where all of the woundedness of human experience exists. Oh, you want to be Christ-like? Oh, you want to open up to super intergalactic universal oneness? Great. Have you dealt with your childhood wounds? Have you dealt with your fear? Have you dealt with your pain or your avarice or your greed or some of these things that could complicate though that that feeling of universal oneness and connectivity. So the Pluto process I mean, of, of the billion things that Pluto can be about and not to have this devolve into a 10 hour lecture on the nature <laughs> of Pluto specifically, but Pluto represents our ability or inability, as it were, to effectively engage these shadows, effect effectively engage this process. When we do, when we can compost our old junk, that compost breaks down the, the shadows of life experience and theoretically we learn from it. We, we then have this incredible resource called compost that we can lay on next year's tomatoes. We want that. We want Pluto. If we didn't have a Pluto process, then all then we'd take all of our garden scraps and throw it into a heap and it would just slowly break down anaerobically and it would smell and attract vermins. We don't want smell and vermins in our life, so we got to <laughs> stir it up. It's called right. therapy. <laughs> it's called <laughs> taking a look at the stuff and, and really processing it right. down. Process, turning it over, as you say. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the gardener so, is coming out and Ryan, I love it as he explains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, yeah. a gardener. Oh, you just wait. <laughs> you just wait until the saxophone really gets going. Uh, yeah. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I want to, I, I don't want to just paint Pluto as the dark side. I'm going to do that, believe me, but I don't want to only paint it as that. That's the first step is the awareness of the darkness, the awareness of the shadow, the awareness of the fact that we most likely have some stuff to heal and that stuff unhealed can prevent us from our happiness, our power, our engagement, our mission, and all of mm -hmm. the other good juju that we want, the super intergalactic universal oneness or whatever. And so the second part though of Pluto is if we have engaged that, if we have done the work, that's where the power is. So Pluto is ultimately about powerful presence and the uh, being in the present moment. And like Henry David Thoreau said, living deeply and sucking out all the marrow of life. This is what, what makes Pluto reson resonate so well as the modern ruler of Scorpio, because that's what Scorpio wants. Scorpio wants us to confront our mortality and say, okay, if I had one more second to live, what is really important? Mm -hmm. And so we want the Pluto process to reveal to us what's really important, what's really necessary and, and where the healing uh, really must take place. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Pluto the deep project. dive into our own psyche and and often um that comes for folks somewhere in the point of the question that emerges at some point doesn't matter if you're a, a youngster a teen or a, a young adult to middle age to you know on the on the last slide you know yeah. it's who am i what am i here for like that yeah. question can come out and that's Pluto kind of working, working. It's like, pay attention. Yeah. You know, yep. it's time to take a look. And each generation is going to have 
a different theme. And and now, you know, we're with the Pluto and Aquarius. So the baby's being born now or the seed of the future. And we kind of see that materialize, you know, as they hit their Saturn return in 30 years or whatnot, right? right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, I always love that about in uh, what we learned in Calistoga when Stephen talked about, you know, the, the future, the problems that we have today are being born right now. Those <laughs> kids that are being born right now are the ones that have the solution to this because they have it dialed in. It's in the, it's in, in every, it's kind of an interesting, it's like, oh, and that's very interesting because yeah. of the Saturn component in there. It's like, yeah, that's how it kind of realizes and how we evolve, right? With uh, uh, all of those things that get presented as they mature, right? So, so Pluto in Cancer is kind of on the tail end. There's, you know, sure. I think Jimmy Carter is still hanging in there unless I yeah. missed any kind of news, but I think he's still hanging, he's Pluto in Cancer right? Like he's the oldest that I know. There's a few others, but while they're still on earth there, that's significant, right? To me until that is no longer on earth. I mean, I'm sure there's folks in Mongolia that could be like dialed into Pluto and cancer longer than even Jimmy Carter will, you know? So sure. I think it's valuable to kind of keep that in mind because there's a, a space that's held in the material world while that's around, right? For us to kind of remember and re you have that accessible. Right. And then it becomes kind of the history that we have to go back and look at and see what did happen last time? <laughs> you know? As we right now in Pluto in Aquarius, because we look back and we go, when's the last time that Pluto was in Aquarius? What, what was going on? You know, our nation was under its formation. So much going on in, in the whole world at that time with France and those kinds of things as well, in terms of their revolutionary um undertakings around that period of time so pluto and aquarius yeah. is very interesting <laughs> so yes it is. pluto and cancer is kind of what it what is that an in conjunct because it's not it's not the opposite because yep. that's pluto and leo yep. so yep. and and, and that's, that's the way we want to uh, approach this generational experiences to consider that aspectual relationship between them and yeah you're right on sarah it's it is a uh, and in conjunct a quincunx, if we consider zero quincunx. degrees Cancer in relation to zero mm -hmm. degrees uh, Aquarius. And what's mm -hmm. interesting is that we're going to use some of the same languaging when we talk about another in conjunct uh, with, with what? Uh, Pluto in Virgo, I believe, will be an in conjunct relationship too. Mm. Yep, Although yep, there's... Yep two kinds of in conjuncts there's the now now with again not to let this devolve into a day-long lecture on the quincunx <laughs> but this mm -hmm. this aspect is is it's not really a frictional aspect the way a square is it's not an oppositional in your face aspect the way the opposition is but it's almost like this mosquito in the ear the fly buzzing around you kind of mm -hmm. like the oh i twisted my ankle and it's still not healing what do i do how do i adapt to life with this pain here but i still have to run my marathon but my ankle hurts discuss mm -hmm. so there's two yeah. different approaches to healing here and uh mm -hmm. we'll bring in the in conjunct and the virgo relationship in a minute but right now mm -hmm. the the relation the relationship between aquarius and cancer is more of an eighth house experience of healing and that eighth house mm. experience of healing is the confrontation with our mortality and oh lo and behold those who are in pluto in in can who have pluto in cancer are in their mid to late 80s early 90s or mm -hmm. have passed on and so right. so yeah, definitely it stands mm -hmm. to reason that the confrontation with uh, death is okay. Yeah, that fly is gonna land in my soup any minute now. How can I be happy right, right. now? And again, I entered right. with a thorough quote. I'm gonna, you know, milk it for all it's worth. You know, <laughs> how can we 
you know, live it's so sturdily and Spartan like and suck all the marrow out of life because you have just this one moment. How can we mm -hmm. make our life extraordinary? So Pluto and Aquarius is asking the Pluto and Cancer generation to make the most of every second. How can you innovate? How can you stay stay magical? Is there a next step that you can take even if you're on your deathbed? You know, is there someone that you need to forgive or someone you need to ask forgiveness uh, from? And so this kind of uh, tying a bow on any of the shadows or darknesses of life is very important for that generation at this point. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they're very, very, uh, I mean, 1938, I mean, they're the, where they are, you know, in their cognitive ability to, you know, they are in that place of, you know, living absolutely in the moment now. Right. So that's interesting to kind of explore that kind of the adaptation. But also, I love that you brought out kind of the eighth house perspective and how, you know, that confrontation with the mortality and, um, you know, also, you know, everyone at that moment, I think when they get to that place where, you know, they're on the, the, you know, it's, I'm closer to death than I am to my, the fullest of that life. You know, it's kind of like reviewing. It's like maybe when they were a younger age, they looked forward and say, you know, maybe when I'm, what would I like to say that was happening in my life? You know, sitting at my, you know, at the end of my life at 90, 95, 100, somebody will always have a, 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 a year that they've picked and say, you know, when I'm a hundred years old and I look back on my life, what will be the, the milestones, the things that I can say that I did or I went about or made choices or how I approached my life or what I learned spiritually like there's just different components of being a human there's a spiritual part of ourselves. there's an emotional part of ourself you know the physical part of ourself and you know the balance all of that and what someone might kind of say well you know when i'm 50 and i'm looking at you know when i'm 100 and i look back i would want to say i did this this and this and this and that would be like you know but that's something that we own and then when we get to that place you know it's like well i did this it's, it's almost like having the pre-life review before you're kind of exiting the physical context yeah. and being yeah you know, thrown into that other realm, you know, by, you know, this is finished. And then, you know, we've heard a lot in some of the, um, I don't know, Raymond Moody's work that he's done on, on folks who've had those near death experiences where they have that review, you know? And so, but I imagine there's a little bit more to it when you are fully on go and you're not coming back, right? Like, <laughs> cause those are near death. They, they're still living to give us some of that information. So it's kind of interesting to do. So that's really yeah. interesting. Going into Leo, that's kind of the opposition. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, the confrontation. And this is an interesting one because of, of the, that's such a strong, I mean, that's a Saturn kind of aspect, right? Like that confrontation that way. So in, you know, that's the boomer, that's a huge generation uh, population number on planet That's earth with the pluto and leo right yeah and um so this one is really because to me this is also who's in power some some of them um yep. and so it's kind of interesting to kind of explore that like what we're we're dealing with as pluto goes through aquarius and is confronting all of that at an opposition you know yeah. um, so what are your thoughts is, on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is very, very, very important. I mean, this is this is kind of the biggie that's happening here. Now, we have to observe the nature of Pluto in Leo. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Forrest said Pluto in Leo, the, the, this is the generation representing the last of the great kings and queens. And if we just look at... Uh, rock music in the 60s i mean i'm 50 years old born in 72 and guess what music i listen to yeah i still pretty much listen to you know led zeppelin the the great music of the late 60s early mm -hmm. 70s that, early 70s, that yeah. the pluto and leo generation as they were coming into maturity and really coming into mm -hmm. their power they were the great kings, the great showmen, showwomen, the, mm. the great performers, the, the ones who 
have all of that Leonian solar power, solar power, Leo mixed with Pluto power of the underworld you know mm. i was king merlin i was or you know i was merlin i was king david i was king arthur i was you know the queen of france every single one of them no offense of course to any pluto i mean more like you know credit where credit is due pluto and leo you are the kings and queens you are the rulers it's just here now Pluto and Aquarius says, I don't need a king. Pluto and Aquarius says, what about the group mind? What's best for all of us? Yes, I have my individual uh, sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And in that, how can we all have individual sovereignty? And what, you want to rule over me? You want to show me the way, Pluto and Leo? Ha ha, here comes Pluto and Aquarius. <laughs> to kind of put put the uh the 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 people in the kingdom aquarius mm -hmm. pitted against the king or queen and those words mm -hmm. pitted against well there's the yeah. opposition yeah and so we already have that sensation potential. going on don't we <laughs> yeah we, we, we've got that Makes it potential juicy. for clash where yeah. you know the 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 wave now the 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 uh, the hidden power the the power of the underworld you know Pluto mm -hmm. where's Jupiter you know is king of the <laughs> gods you know, Pluto's king of all the subterranean power and there's a lot of power there and that mm -hmm. uh, that Aquarian wave is now mm -hmm. confronting all things Leo it's now confronting mm -hmm. all of the oh you want to have rule over me oh you want to dictate me dictate my actions and so and so the mm -hmm. the balancing act now is very important for those who are in the pluto and leo generation to mm -hmm. observe everybody who exists on the planet today not as their subjects but as people with whom to co-create that's not mm -hmm. always an easy thing for Leonian energy. I mean, not I've because got we're Leon... still on the end fringe, I think, of people in power, like in the the president of the United States, VP. Oh, well, the VP might be in Pluto and Virgo. I have to double check that one. I think she's younger. Yeah, so, but other around, well, Canada's is probably Pluto in Virgo. But there's a lot of rulers around the world who have the Pluto and Leo combination, and they're confronted with this. Uh, you know how they collaborate with the collective at in in part of the how they lead. Right. So that's yeah. so, so important because totally. it feels like there's a high tension as we go into this next election period and what's going right. on in other countries around the world. It's not just our country, mm -hmm. but any, mm -hmm. I mean, France, I mean, look what's going on in France uh, recently. I mean, I, I see it more than one country, but it's, it's kind of that, that confrontation that's the Leo mindset in the, uh, the elders, uh, you know, and that's part of the, it's part of the process of the transition and who evolves, who has evolved in that group to be able to embody that and speak to it. Or is it really going to be the passing of the baton at the kind of the next major election cycle where that may take place? I, you know, that's kind of to be determined, right? I mean, we're still kind of yeah. early. It's starting to emerge now who went, who's going to run. And we just seen announcements recently, but I really think that's key. Because they, they yeah. said in decision makers that can last for decades, right? And especially during this Pluto in the next 20 years is very, very interesting. But also who in there, just in these first five years, because we also have Saturn. I'm going to bring in another one here. Saturn in uh, moving out of Pisces into Aries will have Neptune right there with it when it emerges into Aries. And that's a whole nother interesting <laughs> era. That's another podcast. <laughs> That's another podcast. We'll do that later. But it's it's important because it's in this this early mix of Pluto and Aquarius. It's kind of in in the what I call the in the, the threads of the tapestry. So yeah. but to me it's this kind of like what happens with the handing off of the baton? What gets picked up in the leaders and the elders as you know 
how some have evolved or some holding on to some of the same old patterns. Some have done their work and some have not. Yes. And right. we are seeing sometimes in elders, I don't know about you, but for me, I've noticed this as, okay, they, some of them, not all, I'm not going to, I'm not going to broad sweep, but you, you can see it going, oh, I thought they would have had that one by now that particular idea or ideology or where they are in some kind of thing that other generations of Pluto would be like, no, I don't see that. Right. And so they, they're embodying a, a more humanitarian, uh, I, I guess it's more collectively accepting and acknowledging more equal, you know, the equal of individuals across all walks of life more and more, you know, but you know, we had that where it was more different in more different it was it was different in you know pluto generations prior i mean i i kind of recognize that growing up i'm a pluto in virgo a late virgo like a 27 i have my plutos in 27 virgo i was born in december of 69 so um i'm in that generation and but that generation of pluto and virgo goes uh up to 71 so you're in the next one after that in oh, yeah. Libra. Libra. So we have kind of two representations here, signs. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so the Pluto and Leo is kind of an interesting thing because I know that I recognize even when I was a kid, it's like, wow, grandma and grandpa think that? What? That's so old. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, in terms of racial equality, these kinds of themes and subjects, women being at work, women and being their own person, um, yeah. making their own money, having their own credit cards, these kinds of themes, right? Like these are yeah. you know, generational things and then yeah, doing totally. the work based on that, right? Totally. Yeah. So Pluto and Leo. So when, yeah. So when we consider uh, the archetype of Leo, the king or the queen, it comes down to the question, how are you going to rule? Are you going to rule with impunity, tax the heck out of your subjects and off with their heads? You know, <laughs> that is, you know, one one possibility in those in the Pluto and Leo generation who have not done their work uh, have mm -hmm. a, a little better chance of being more megalom, <laughs> megalomaniacal. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, almost. Yeah. But because I have seen that i'm gonna go out with you know i'm gonna rule till my dying day you're talking about passing a baton i'm not gonna pass crap i'm only gonna hand down my crap but i'm gonna keep my <laughs> baton and so those are the ones that are going right. to right. quite possibly have pluto slap them in the face those are the yeah. ones who i'm going to continue my misogyny well, mm -hmm. Aquarius says we don't have any time for that. That's really right. old school and a whole lot of right. BS. And that wave of the opposition slapping that in the face, I think that there may be some uh, of that generation that is could be in for a rude awakening. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, what about those Pluto and Leos who have done the work? Well, then we have mm -hmm. the archetype of the good, loving king and queen. We tax mm -hmm. fairly. We set up adequate defenses around our townspeople. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. loving king or queen, you know, yay, oh, it's the king, it's the queen. You know, they're celebrated for good reason because of their nobility. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. those are able to use the opposition as integration where, well, since I'm in a place of authority and nobility and I'm coming from my heart, those are the ones we want to celebrate. Okay, you're in power, so please, you know, treat us well. You know, there is the possibility that those Pluto and Leo who, uh, who are in power will assist and work with that Aquarian wave. Oh, yeah. I've experienced everything. You should have seen what I did in the 60s, you know? <laughs> oh, this Aquarius stuff? We wrote the book on Aquarius, you know? We broke all the molds. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, 20-year-old. Yeah, you want to... You, you tell me you're a man, woman, man, woman? 
great yeah you know i see you for who you are as a as a human and i love you and then and then the aquarian individual says wow thank you and then there can be this awesome growth and power that's what we want to have happen whether or not it will we shall see we're on the cusp of all this change we're on the cusp of because we're back and forth with pluto uh, in Aquarius and finishing its last little dalliance as in, <laughs> in Capricorn through November of next year, which is interesting yeah. because that's in the election period of the United States. So oh, yep. isn't yep. that interesting? I can't, I don't recall, but I wonder is Pluto sitting at 29 degrees in so many minutes, almost a return to Aquarius after being in the last, very, very last suite of Capricorn on election yeah. day in 24. Plus we have a major, major eclipse happening in 24, but that's a whole nother conversation in podcast, but that's what kind election. of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, what election, yeah. 2024? Yeah, I, I don't. The recent announcements, do but to me it's so that, I don't, I don't do predictions either. But what I think is interesting though, is that whole Pluto, uh, a, a, a solar energy uh um leo uh, uh, opposite of aquarius and that tug of war kind of like in what's like being polarized and it will con it's continuing to be polarized as we approach that from a leadership standpoint i mean it is also our leaderships of companies and supervisors and managers and across you know this age group who sit in the roles uh, of leadership across all facets of life, right? In any country, right? They're just the elders and then, then, you know, how does that play out? So that's kind of on deck and that's an interesting perspective. And yeah. how Uranus in this period, Saturn and Uranus in this period of time, simply, you know, how those influences and how Saturn in Pisces is a different approach than Saturn in Capricorn, <laughs> right? You know, and what yes, might be right. dialed in there. And also Uranus in Taurus at a square to the Aquarius still, but uh, emerging into an air sign. And once that gets, when Uranus gets to Gemini, that generate, you know, the Pluto Aquarius era, I think goes into overdrive. That's when it really gets lit up. And that's where we're going to see oh. fat things go really fast. So do the inner work now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uranus, um, and Ge Uranus and Gemini uh, trying Pluto in Aquarius. Wait, hold on. I've got to access my chip. I've got a call. Hello? Okay. Oh, the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Story yeah. Now, you know time. what I love about the Pluto in Aquarius that Simon Verster, who's also, he was on, uh, I I love Simon. on my podcast. Simon yeah. mentioned, it's like, but it's our return to the natural world because we are a part of the natural world. And Pluto in Aquarius will stress the importance of that evermore. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Thank you. Yes. So I really like that because, yeah, that speaks to me. Like, you know, like you play a role. Like, I don't have a lot of air in my chart. So I know that I'm the earthy. I'm going to be the earthy one and I'll be the one in the garden and I'll be one very much tuned to like, yeah, I grow my garden. I do my, I do the gardening part. Uh, but a lot of people will play different parts in that, you know, in what we do, but it's kind of like, I can see my, myself being an elder who brings like, yeah, you have all, all these variety of seeds and make sure you continue them on and the heirloom seeds and these kinds of things about our, our connection to the natural world. That's important for our own lively, you know, life on earth. So um, I think that, is important not that technology can't help us it's but how we use it it's how we use it but yeah on we're that participating note, really in a bigger quickly, thing <laughs> really huh? quickly with that i mean you know bring up the natural world to an organic farmer here and i gotta edit <laughs> myself but Please. what we want what we want are those revolutionary innovative brand new technologies that totally it support and reflect the natural processes. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I grew up watching Star Trek and Star Trek Next Generation. Okay. I remember this episode where they were like, oh, we're, we've come upon this planet, Captain, and it looks horribly polluted. Well, send <laughs> this one tachyon pulse and clean up the, the, the pollution. Okay. <laughs> boop, boop. Pollution gone. Awesome. <laughs> Celebrate. I would love to see that. 
Oh, nuclear yeah. fallout. Oh, just press the button. Oh, clean up. Oh, cancer. Oh, just press the button. Cleaned up. That would be great. Right. Well, we never, I mean, if you look at technology in some spaces, you know, like my, my daughter's very interested in marine biology, but she has marine biology plus robots put together. So like the submarine yeah. stuff, the, the submersibles and stuff. But there are other robots that are a little bit scary to me. Not that I have a full blown fear of it, but it's like, are we doing the right thing with these mix? And then you add in AI and all this, and then eh, it sounds a little bit dicey there. But it's Hashtag kind of Terminator. like, <laughs> right? <laughs> we, we've had so many movies. Um, but it's more like, you know, I can see where... A lot of the the generation that might be Pluto and Sag or Pluto in um, maybe even Pluto and Scorpio have these uh, strong intentions for cleanup and doing, mm -hmm. you know, our uh, and our operating. It seems like a higher plane, you know, just like how she's dialed in. I don't know. Cause every kid group is different, but just the way she carried herself. I'm like, I wasn't like that at 16. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's kind of interesting to observe, you know, what that generation um, mix is and how the, the the pursuit of climate change is in their face 24 7 and then you know what are we gonna what are my interests what am I participating what is my my mission here my mission may be that I'm a part of the rainbow group who's coming in to clean up right like I really see that I don't know if you do but I do oh, yeah. you know in terms of uh, the younger generation yeah well the uh I, if we're going to talk younger generation, I would love to zero in on that that uh, couple, three, four, five, six year period when Uranus and Neptune were conjoined in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. I could imagine that when they get older, Capricorn, they're going to be the ones to really integrate the spirituality, Neptune, and the science. Mm -hmm. Mm, beautiful and yeah so that's a, that's a big a one of solutions that, like uh, they night, born in 89 to like 93 ish because that was yeah, like 90, yeah. 92 of, so of that... pluto and end of pluto is it the end of pluto in the uh uh scorpio beginning of mm -hmm. pluto and sag yes so mm -hmm. But yep. before we jump ahead to that, the lead-in <laughs> of cleanup. Hello, mm -hmm. Pluto and Virgo. Welcome to yeah, the next in conjunct relationship between Pluto in Aquarius and Pluto in Virgo. Those right. of you who, thank you so much, by the way, who are, <laughs> who, who chose to be born in that uh, most challenging uh, placement of Pluto, Pluto and Virgo, uh, you, uh, you people, uh, you, <laughs> the, those of you who have been born, have chosen to be born in that generation are those mm -hmm. ones that are tasked with the major cleanup work that, you know, mm, yeah, we Pluto just go to work. Gem <laughs> yeah. Pluto and Gemini. Gen X Pluto in that Pluto area. Pluto. Yeah. The previous generations totally made a mess out of this. And now <laughs> here you are having to clean up their mess. So as your generation is now starting to come into power as mm -hmm. your generation is starting to uh, be the ones who have some control over policy etc i mm -hmm. the best of all possible expressions here is that you now have an ability to make some effective virgo change aquarius mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so have so you know the shadow of Plu the shadow of Pluto in Virgo is just sitting there and complaining. This is wrong and that's wrong and you're wrong and you're bad and everything sucks and then you die. Give me some money, you know, whatever. You know, it's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the real the those Plutos and Virgos who have done the work mm -hmm. are are have have a sense of humility coupled with a sense of uh, 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 authority, like I am tasked to be the mm -hmm. ones who, who help to, you know, repair the bridges and fix the mm -hmm. roads of mm -hmm. human consciousness. So those mm -hmm. who have accepted, like you, those who have accepted mm -hmm. 
your role of like, okay, I've got to get my hands dirty and I've got to help human consciousness to evolve. We would mm -hmm. hope this is a sixth house relationship, by the way, a, a, a mm -hmm. really a powerful for Virgos, six, the natural ruler of the sixth house, where conscious Virgos, conscious Pluto and Virgos can say, number one, yeah, everything's messed up and we live in this hell hole <laughs> and there's potholes everywhere and the climate and the pollution and this and that and that and that. And I have worked all my life at finding effective solutions. And now that I'm mm -hmm. coming into power, how can I actually, in, how can I actually ground mm -hmm. Virgo being an earth sign? How can I ground these methods, mm -hmm. techniques? Right. Uh, uh, Practic uh, and practical. So there's a very much of practical skills based approach to that Plu with a Pluto and Virgo bunch, right? Yeah, in practical, and, methodical ways. Yeah. Yeah. And Pluto and Virgo, I also think there is such a huge sweep of, mm, I don't know, maybe it's just my, my, my perception on the beach ball, as they say, uh, about <clears throat> it's an inside job first, because if you deal with the inside stuff first and you transform your unique, you know, your unique participation in the whole thing, then you're going to be able to engage in the world based on that evolutionary intention that you set forth. Yes. Right. Yeah, That's well really powerful. Right. <laughs> so not that the Pluto in Leo also doesn't do that but it's it's it from a different perspective right it's yeah. to me about that relationship to the self the soul the heart that the the leo uh, pluto and leo transformed and then how that it's on that spectrum you know in terms of the axis of aquarius and but with virgo it's kind of like inside job first and then i can show up to do my work and what the my, my participation in the whole is going to be interesting yeah. at the in conjunct you know but it's kind of like the still little mosquito bite kind of thing like you said with the other one the pluto and cancer but from a different perspective right um Great. Great. yeah so i from, like from to... more of more of more of a perspective of i can i can have an effect whereas right. pluto and cancer is like Okay, <laughs> take from me what <laughs> right. you will, universe. <laughs> Pluto and Virgo in conjunct with yeah. with transiting Pluto is more like, mm -hmm. okay, looks like I really gotta, you know, have the rubber meet the road here. Looks like I mm -hmm. really have to uh, embody, like you were saying, integrate and then act on these things. Because if I don't act on these things, I'm just sitting here complaining that I'm just a complainer right. and then what's going to fix right. nothing. Yeah. I really think when I kind of look Pluto and Virgo, it's also, it re-emphasizes free will, the, but the use of the free will, once you've dealt with some of your patterns that were kind of taking you off course to what the intention was for your self self actualization yeah. and and they can come back and knock on the door <laughs> you know depending on where you're getting tested on it in, dirt, in certain transits but because maybe you have dealt with some things and work through some things then your approach can be different because you really really worked on it right i mean i think that's and um, and sometimes it's you know I also don't dismiss grace, grace being involved in certain events in our life that help us under that transformational cycle. And, yeah. um, you know, that's important. So that's Pluto and Virgo. It's very interesting yeah. perspective on that one with the, with when Pluto's in Aquarius, how do we all line up and how are we participating in that whole thing? Yeah. Pluto and Libra, yeah. your generation. Pluto so Libra, 1971 to seven to 1984 yeah, relationships. <laughs> Well, how about yeah. this one? It's all good. <laughs> Pluto and Libra. What does Libra want? Libra wants peace. Libra wants mm -hmm. you to have what you need and me to have what I need. We call that healthy relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Healthy reciprocity. Then there's mm -hmm. peace. Then you're happy and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Our nervous mm -hmm. system has found equilibrium, contrary mm -hmm. to its opposite sign, Aries, where it's all <laughs> you know, high intensity. But Libra wants the peace, wants the ease. Libra wants the pretty flowers. We want the good <laughs> chocolate. We, 
you know, the season of Libra, the, the bringing in of the harvest and sharing the bounty and having others' bounty shared with us. What yes. could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, those yeah. of us who are born in Pluto and Libra can take a shadow approach to it. It's called, mm -hmm. it's all good. Oh, that that jerk, that misogynist, that, that oh, oh, they're just, they're just wounded. I'm just going to be an apologist for them and gloss over everything and pretend that everything's okay, thus ignoring the reality and the hardcore intensity of the world, further compounding the problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, Noah, Pluto and Libra, something uh, intense is happening. That's okay. I'm just going to go over here and drink a half a bottle of tequila. Oh, no, everything's fine. I'm just going to go over here and distract myself with media. No, everything's fine. I'm just going to make my world as, you know, insulated as humanly possible and not worry about that big world out there. Shadow Pluto in Libra. Mm -hmm. But Pluto mm -hmm. and Libra done right. Mm -hmm. If we imagine Libra the sign of the scales and mm -hmm. there's different weights of, uh, often on the different dishes and the scale, the work isn't so much over here or over here. You know, one person can't really have an effect on the other scale because we all have to be responsible for our own dish. The work mm -hmm. is in the adjustment at the fulcrum in the center. Mm, How do like we that. make the appropriate adjustments? How do we make the appropriate give and take and balance and harmony? How do we make a good deal so that mm -hmm. both sides are happy? So that win, win, you know, is mm -hmm. the result. Not, I win mostly and you kind <laughs> of win. No, that's a maladjustment. You know, somebody's mm -hmm. going to be upset and then watch mm -hmm. out when Pluto enters Scorpio kind of thing. <laughs> so Pluto in Libra done right is a very conscious adjustment mm -hmm. at the fulcrum in the center. It's a very mm -hmm. conscious, okay, well, we might have to make some concessions over here in order to, you know, have this side have a little more balance and that's okay. And so mm -hmm. done right, Pluto and Libra, we are the peacemakers. We do have mm -hmm. the ability to bring peace to other people. I mean, mm -hmm. as a representative of the Pluto and Libra generation, <laughs> I grow flowers. I try to make this world just a, a little, little more beautiful. I'm also a professional astrologer. Uh, it, if through my consultations, people can find a little more balance and harmony and peace in their nervous system, having had their astrology explained to them, oh, I have done my work. Oh, praise the good Lord. <laughs> That's what I'm here to do. That's my mission and purpose to help make mm -hmm. this world a little more beautiful. And so here mm -hmm. we're looking between Pluto and Aquarius and Pluto and Libra, we're looking at an air trine. And so mm -hmm. the trine, we, our generation, that my generation now has an opportunity to really make some forward momentum here in the realm of whatever we could consider peace to be. Mm -hmm. Aquarius is very much concerned, in fact, it all the way concerned with the balance between liberty and equality, with mm. the balance between self and other, the balance between everything that I need as a sovereign individual and how mm -hmm. that sovereign individual affects community and the world at large. So that mm -hmm. Aquarian tension of, of, I need to be myself, but I also need to exist in community. How do we do it? Discuss. Well, hey, here's the Libra, those Pluto and Librans who have, who have had some conscious experience with adjusting the fulcrum. Mm -hmm. This is a magnificent, beautiful opportunity, nay, a mm -hmm. gift for those conscious right. uh, Pluto and Libras 
to make the necessary adjustments, adjustments so yeah. that the balancing act between liberty and equality, what do we call that? Justice. Yes. Uh, I think Aristotle said justice is mm -hmm. the balance between liberty and equality. So we can mm -hmm. find a true justice mm -hmm. in the That's world. Really yeah, mm -hmm. we put in Slido and Libras have a, a magnificent opportunity now. Yeah. So that that's exciting though. I like, you know, you know, as that you know, the air trying quality of, of that. That that's really gives me additional hope for kind of some of how things have been playing recently and how it might kind of there's that to me that's the ambassadors for that balance and you know, I love that fulcrum. Is that what you call that fulcrum? Yeah. Uh adjustment in how you guys will be the ambassadors to how we adjust to that community. Yeah to the social justice and so that that to me is like very exciting to kind of like oh the wind in the sails on those you know themes that have been more of a struggle with the pluto when the pluto was in the uh capricorn at a square to that right so it's like going up again it's going up you know what i mean finally wind in the sails right so that will be uh awesome <laughs> That will be awesome to see how that emerges, right? So that's exciting. Well, let's jump. We're going to jump because we're. I'm watching my time. Jumping into Pluto in Scorpio. for Pluto's in Scorpio for like, what, 12 years or so? 15 years? Yeah. No, 12 years. Love it. 1984 to 1995. The intense group here <clears throat> that is at the square. Yeah for folks right. with that, right? Yeah. So that is a, a unique, and that's the closing square, right? Yeah. So yeah, let, let's, uh, let's, let's look at it. Uh, no, that's an opening square, excuse me. Yeah, it's opening, uh, uh, it's a whack by, by movement Wax. transit to natal, it'd be a, a, mm -hmm. a waxing square. So yeah. this is what we want to celebrate. Yeah. The, the score, mm -hmm. and, and I, I gave a little intro into Scorpio when I was talking about Libra and the scales and the adjustment at the fulcrum in the center. Mm -hmm. When we mm -hmm. have both, when we have that harmony, when we have that balance, when we have that uh, successful navigation of Libra mm -hmm. energy, then watch this, watch this, then both parties. Get off the dish, climb up the little chains, run across the bar to the fulcrum in the center, and combine their energy. Oh, merge. That's oh, that's that scorpionic energy, oh. where the two become more than the sum of its parts. This is where we get Scorpio business. My idea and your money comes together and makes us both either rich or poor. You know. Right. <laughs> Right, right. Hopefully it makes us both rich, but you know, mm. or I agree to marry you and you agree to marry me. And now we combine our money and our gametes and, you know, here's the baby right. and here's the bank account and here's the mutual <laughs> entanglement and keyword mm. there with Scorpio is entanglement. And so mm. Scorpio, Scorpio is here to observe all of our complex entanglements in society. Mm. Are there complex entanglements in this world? Mm. Business, yeah. relationship, you know, right. the, the, uh, the long-term effect of previous generations <laughs> on present day environment. There's all of these very mm -hmm. complex entangled yeah. relationships mm -hmm. or morals or ethics or you know what is good what is bad you know discuss well here's Pluto and Scorpio whose job it is to root out all of the crap and come to the hardcore truth of what is right. that is now a challenge mm -hmm or is being challenged by the aspect of, of Pluto in Aquarius saying, yeah, it's not really that easy to, uh, you know, how you find the beginning of the strand of spaghetti in the plate of spaghetti and unravel <laughs> each individual 
strand, Pluto and Aquarius might want to just stick some dynamite in there and blow the whole thing to smithereens. In <laughs> which case, Pluto and Scorpio is going to be like, yay, death! Ah! <laughs> so what we want to watch for is for mm. those, those less than evolved Pluto in Scorpio individuals becoming so incredibly dark, so incredibly... Mm weighed down by everything sucks everything's shadow everything is not working everything's complex it's a whole big mess of spaghetti shaboom blow the whole thing to smithereens mm, that's acting out in frustration maybe for. because of that shit well yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you so know another thing that more. yeah go ahead yeah another thing that kind of came to mind i i work in in the, my day job is in the tech world so I kind of see things from the tech, uh, how they emerge and things like that. One of the things that's very interesting is how we've already kind of seen the the guffaws of AI recently. <laughs> but um, that's a whole other podcast in itself. But from a Pluto and Scorpio standpoint, I kind of think when you said entanglement about how we as individuals in a modern day and age and how our identity is so connected into digital forms of everything, like just having a Google, a, a Gmail account and every kind of transaction that we ever do in the digital space. And there, we are so entangled that you can almost not operate in life without having a digital, you know, imprint somewhere. Right. And to me, there's that square coming in like where is that start of can we have an existence without that or are we forced to contem contemplate that because it is so difficult because of what may be emerging and what people maybe in the masses who don't understand the, or maybe have contemplated the consequence of such things for a long term the, it's the the tech is going so fast and it will go even faster i think and the things that we uh in our human form which are you know we have the natural world we cannot live without the natural world the bees you know we have to be careful of how we take care of where we live and the air we breathe and the water that we need to exist you know yeah. and our natural resources and how we we need to be better stewards right so it's kind of interesting that square to me from the Pluto and Scorpio generation, how they will be like, to me, the full court press on, well, does that make sense? And yeah, the, there might be some who are like, let's just, and that could be where there's some sabotage that goes down, right? That That's very possible because there'll be that max frustration faced off like that in fixed signs. Wow, wow, right? But what else? I mean, in terms of that technical relationship with the very, very natural Scorpios, Scorpios are very much in the natural, the bulk of I've ever met. My daughter's a five planet Scorpio person, but she's not Pluto. Scorpio, she's Pluto Sag, <laughs> but natural, like all natural. It's kind of that Taurus Scorpio thing. And uh, I kind of think about that and that entanglement piece. It's very, very important in what emerges in this 20 year face off, right? That to me is like a face off. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so what we want is the best of all possible expressions. I mean, squares aren't bad. You need a square block. It's called the cornerstone of a building. You need a foundation mm -hmm. of uh, 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 in order to build something upon it. And that mm -hmm. foundation takes work and effort and calculation, and blueprints. That's a square and done right, then you can really build on. So it's a magnificent opportunity for the Pluto and Scorpio generation to to really take a good look at what is really valuable, what is really worth it. Sensory gratification is, you know, yeah, that's that's a good thing. But long term health and longevity of the planet. Well, that's something really rich and that's worth the work. So if mm -hmm. Scorpio, Pluto and Scorpio generation can have a really conscious, evolved awareness as to what is really worth it, mm -hmm. it can apply the appropriate technologies in ways that form an effective, solid foundation on which to build the rest of their life. So done right. well. Pluto and Not Scorpio. only their generation, but their children and grandchildren and seven yeah. generations after, right? I really think that generation, 
is the generation that will think kind of deeper into how far reaching that will be. Yeah. But I, I would probably give that to any of the fixed signs because they have such that, that nature, you know? So, true but definitely that. Scorpio, Scorpio. Yeah, and also that. our relationship with pharmaceuticals and any chemical combinations that go into our natural world. I think this is up for power and face-offs. So this is very important. Yep, yep, so yep, yep. that's interesting. Pluto and Sagittarius, a little, little younger crowd, born in between 1995 to 2008. Yep. They are going to be at a sextile, right? Yes, sextile, natu uh, natural sextile relationship, which is a fantastic opportunity. So let's take a quick look at the archetype of Sagittarius, again, without devolving into a five-day lecture. Sagittarius, <laughs> Sagittarius is, full disclosure, I'm a Sagittarius, but we Sagittarius Sag right oh, here. Hey, Sag. High five. Hey, Sag. We, we Sagges get the bad rap of being a know-it-all and have having all of the answers because that's what we get paid for. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, not kidding, but that is what we get paid for. That there, there's a reason, there's a purpose. Sagittarius mm -hmm. is the is the the um, archetypology, the reflection, the tone of integrating wisdom gained over all of the previous seasons. Sagittarius mm -hmm. synthesizes wisdom gained in Aries, synthesizes wisdom gained in Gemini, Cancer, Leo, all of them. We take a mm -hmm. little piece of all of the preceding seasons, integrate it into something uh, that, that surpasses knowledge that theoretically we can call wisdom. So the Pluto and Sagittarius generation done right are those souls who have lived lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and hopefully have learned a thing or two that they can show the rest of us the way <laughs> out of the darkness. Mm. What better at what better and this is the natural sextile between Sagittarius and Aquarius. What a better mm -hmm. way to integrate wisdom than by using it to innovate. So the mm -hmm. younger generation, I feel like so old, I'm 50 years old. <laughs> Here I am no. talking about the younger it's my generation. <laughs> yeah, that's my child, <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> my daughter's, my daughter and youngest son's generation uh, are <laughs> here to take their wisdom and please, little Lord, baby Jesus in the manger, please, please, please integrate some thoughtful wisdom into mm -hmm. this, what looks like could be really scary, potentially scary technological innovations. The Pluto mm -hmm. and Sagittarius generation sextile has a magnificent opportunity now to say, okay, well, I remember when we tried to zig and it resulted in World War One and Two and the Vietnam War. I wonder what would happen if we zagged. And so their wisdom, their applied mm -hmm. wisdom to the innovation could result in those technologies where it's like, oh, I see, it. we just need a tachyon pulse or whatever. Bloop, they're clear. Because <laughs> I know, because I'm a Sag and I'm supposed to know everything. Please, mm -hmm. goddess, yes, let let the let the magical innovation with the wisdom and the philosophy of natural law be applied to these Aquarian innovations and changes, resulting in the really beautiful positive potential of Pluto in Aquarius, which can be those really transformative technologies, tachyon pulse, boop, cleans up mm -hmm. the radiation. Or how about this one? This is my favorite. <laughs> this is my absolute favorite. Get ready for this one. Take a deep breath. <laughs> there is absolutely no scientific backing for astrology other than, well, I guess the moon affects the tides. <laughs> and there's a relationship between the moon and the water of the earth 
do you have water in your body? Well, I guess there might be some kind of relationship there. That's about as scientific as we can get right now. But what would happen if we had this little, you know, not to make another Star Trek reference, but I'm going to make another Star Trek reference. What if we had a little... Yeah. Oh, it looks like you're having a Pluto square. Let me adjust some some of the uh, hertz here in my Rife machine, and now it's going to be Mo Betta because uh, we Mo adjusted some, we, we adjusted some frequency in in you. Yeah, is mm -hmm. that possible with Pluto and Aquarius? You bet it's possible. And so yeah. I want to celebrate those possibilities because that mm -hmm. which that which prior to this ingress was just kind of wishful thinking or yeah i know astrology works but there's no way to prove it well the wisdom of sagittarius applied to the technology might give us those innovations that really can mm -hmm. ultimately scientifically prove astrology and sure, uh, I'm, actually, um, I'm actually working on an article right now doing that no but, i can't oh, wait no no that's excellent because i i really think we're under the era emerging where we see that what we have thought and what we know about spiritual practices that help us make yeah. our connection to our divinity that are that speak to me going to get more dialed in and we'll understand things more from a technical standpoint will where the technology will catch up to the idea of the spirituality was doing in the first place i really think that's emerging and with sound frequencies and uh, the frequency of music, right? These kinds of things and how they heal and how they, how we are in our vibration and, you know, wellness and all of these things that are a part of that focus, you know, I think that's going to be uh, continuing to emerge there and what's really viable and what gets mm -hmm. picked up there. And then what also may emerge in technology in some form that we will use to actually <laughs> more in the healing than we have maybe where you know there's there's advances in in modern medicine that are excellent and and save lives every day and that's great but there's also the emerging of what about the, sex, the spirituality that's a, in there as well and what's what's coming available from that under just recently i was watching um, a video someone who produces videos about near-death experiences and just a lot of stories and it just well well done it's on my facebook if anybody follows me on facebook but i just shared some of those i'm like these were fantastic the way he's produced them and the stories and how beautifully he's produced these and what emerges out of there is it's undeniable something is going on there and to find out that he's like connected with people who are out of the medical community you know a nurse who you know flatlined and then her experience and you know others so it's really really interesting to see where that will continue to evolve and and uh be defined in this period of time with uh the sag you know who you know, who those folks are who are going to be going into universities they're going to be the ones in the you know, they'll be moving up. I don't know. My daughter was born in 06 and she's kind of a late Sag. So kind of like in that, but we're, those folks are going to be emerging into their Saturn for Saturn squares and these kinds of like key moments in their life and what their mission is like. So it's kind of like interesting to see how that will play out in those, in those, those groups. So, and then Pluto and Capricorn are Pluto kind of Capricorn. Yeah. I mean, not the folks too that are much born. to say about, you know, too about the uh what the the 10 year olds or 11 12 yeah. 13 year olds but it's going to uh pluto and aquarius is going to take 20 years to move through that mm -hmm. sign right and so you know the the younger children right now over the next 20 years when we think of the semi-sextile and how uh and how the how one sign is a natural outgrowth a natural mm -hmm. evolution of the preceding sign this mm -hmm. is actually really uh, shown really well in capricorn to aquarius because they're both mm -hmm. naturally uh, uh and uh historically uh ruled by saturn it's mm -hmm. just that now pluto in aquarius has the added benefit 
of a Uranian influence too. And so right. for the next 20 years or so, we're looking at this younger generation now needing to really integrate. Okay, we were born into a pretty messed up world where pretty <laughs> much every square inch of our planet has been explored. And, you know, we've taken things to kind of maximum extension and mm -hmm. we've got... We, we know a whole heck of a lot. Now, there's a, an incredible amount we don't know, which is right. then the natural extension, how things, how Saturn moves to Uranus. And so mm -hmm. their integration of, okay, I want things to work and I need to innovate. And so if, if they can do it right, I think the Pluto in Capricorn generation has a magnificent opportunity over the next 20 years to be those who are kind of the recipients of the positive and mm -hmm. shadow uh, uh, experiences mm -hmm. of Pluto mm -hmm. in Aquarius. Done right. right, they can be the innovators who, who make the change Aquarius right. real mm -hmm. Capricorn. And right. so to, to, to integrate Capricorn reality with the Uranian uh, uh, function of innovation, uh, they can if they if they don't allow the shadows of the world to completely uh, beat them down to a pulp. <laughs> They can mm -hmm. do the hard work, Capricorn, mm -hmm. of remaining strong and solid mm -hmm. with healthy boundaries, Capricorn, and proper functionality and process, Capricorn, mm -hmm. well done. Then the innovation mm -hmm. can be right. the, the really positive innovation that we want to see. Mm -hmm. right. However, for those Pluto and Capricorn individuals who have been beaten down by the realities of the world or the the, the strictures of the world, the the, the, mm -hmm. the rules of the world, and they do are feeling oppressed and heavy by that, they might be the ones who are, are pushing the boundaries or pushing the edges or are, are more about the liberty side than the mm -hmm. equality side, which can throw the scales mm -hmm. off balance, making it harder mm -hmm. for us Pluto and Libra <laughs> individuals. <laughs> but, hey. uh, Build the spiritual yeah. muscle, you know, got to have some resistance yeah. to make you stronger. Right. Yeah, and I, exactly. another thing I think about the, the Pluto and Capricorn uh, recent folks um, in terms yeah. of, you know, from 2000, what did I say? 95, no, it was more, 2008 to, 2008 to recent, to the babies. Yeah. So it's like people who during this 20 year era will go through their first Uranus square. They'll go, the some of them will do their first, the early ones of that group will go to their first um, Saturn return. And yeah. so these are kind of, you know, interesting to me is like, depending on their parent and their learning environment and what they were raised in will be like, what kind of a uh, duty driven kind of Pluto Capricorn will feel like they're going, they're under transformation to redefine the structures and those kinds of things. And those places of power and what kind of container it will be you know that will be interesting to see how what they because what they live through they live you know as young kids in this era you know coming through the Pluto and Capricorn you know the the early ones were in you know school of some sort and had to go through a completely paradigm shift of how they were learning and um and th that can be interesting how that will then emerge in their lifetimes how that those all the structures that we think of society those systems in place that they're the art kind of to me like are they the architects they're they are participating in the one in some of the containers that will live for a long time yeah. in their adult life like i think of architecture um those kinds of things bridges uh, systems that make sense yes. for us for 
for a very long time. So that's going to be interesting to, you know, kind of see how, what kind of topics did they get when they're in university, when they're first emerging in there? You know, that'll be very interesting because the stuff will go so fast. It'll be very interesting to see what they get. So that's what I I think. So I will tell. Well, this has been great, you know, to cover all these generations that are, you know, contemplating or kind of we're all living through this Pluto and Aquarius era, what it's going to be. Um, And we're astrologers here to help folks. And uh, where can people find you, Ryan? What's your website or how do the people find you? Sure. My currently in need of an update website is ryanevansastrology.com. If you want to uh, have a direct line to me, emails flowerman1111 at yahoo.com. That's flowerman1111 at yahoo.com. Call now. For only 1995, <laughs> you too can have <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it's yeah. been fun. Do you have any classes going on right now? Webinars or anything? Um, currently, I'm booking up with readings. I, I do private tutoring for any astrologers or astrologists out there who are interested in augmenting yeah. their knowledge. I do private tutoring. I'm mm-hmm. also pretty much, I guess, a full-time teacher for mm-hmm. uh, the Stephen Forrest School, the FCEA. Mm-hmm. So those are the classes I'm teaching right now. My I do have a book that is almost done with its first edit. So look for oh, that uh, hopefully by the end of the end of the year. Uh, maybe when my moon progresses out of the 12th house and comes into conjunction with my ascendant, maybe I'll look for a launch mm. date for, for there that. There you go. And, the and glory so of being an astrologer. Be, you, yeah. yeah. After that, Pick I'll your be date. teaching my own classes. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, I'd highly recommend the Stephen Forrest method. I really like it and uh, mm-hmm. it sure works for me. And uh, works for I me have too. yet to have any complaints from any clients. So I guess it works for them too. So. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm probably going to invite you at another time. I enjoy our time together. And uh, thank you everyone for listening to uh, the One Sages View podcast. And this will probably be coming out sometime in the first part of May. I don't have an exact date because the production, the post-production cycle, but thank you for listening. We really appreciate it and have a great rest of your month. Bye now. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Bye.